It's really a great pleasure to welcome you all here. Um, but I'm actually going to begin a little bit differently than I had imagined. Um, it's a very rainy, gloomy day, and um, as many in this room, but not everyone here knows, it's uh, actually been a very sad day for USC. And there has been a death on the campus, and really a death in the family, and I just wanted to acknowledge that since I know that there are people here with varying degrees of closeness to that situation and there are other people who wanted to be here. Um, and it's just one of those un, unassimilable things. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, but um, I am Nomi Stolzenberg and I'm on the uh, faculty at the law school here. Um, and uh, with uh, Hilary Shore, um, and Ariella Gross, I co-direct the Center for Law, History, and Culture, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary non-stop all year long. Um, and uh, I don't want to say this is the crowning event because we have many more wonderful events to come. Um, I encourage all of you who haven't to um, consult our website and um, we have many events that are open to the public. Um, this is a particularly exciting one. Um, uh, before we commence, I just want, as always, to acknowledge and thank uh, the Office of the Provost, the Dean of the College, and the Dean of the Law School for their ongoing support for the Center and its activities, and our incredible staff, um, Mary Dalpe and Julie Davis, who have just worked unbelievably hard. Um, our RA, Christopher Simon. Um, this has been a, an all-out effort. Um, Gillian Silsby, our publicity maven. Um, it's really been incredible. I'd also like to acknowledge the Center's steering committee and everyone on it um, for all of their help and contributions and conceptualizing and making, making this event possible. Um, in a moment, my task is limited, mainly to just introducing everyone. Um, but before we do that, um, because our format may be a little bit different from what some of you have experienced when coming to meet the author, um, you are going to meet the author, but we're not going to let him talk right away. <laughs> um, we have found that a very successful format um, for creating a discussion around a book um, is to begin with uh, commentaries. Um, so we have a panel of uh, four incredible commentators, each coming at this book and the uh, subjects it raises from different, but although sometimes overlapping, angles. Um, so we're going to start with the commentaries. I, and then we'll let Rick have his say. Um, uh, and then we're going to uh, follow that up with a more free-flowing conversation, first amongst our panelists and our featured author, um, and then turning things over to all of you to bring you into the conversation as well. Um, this is a format that we really favor for book talks in general, but um, this book in particular has generated a lot of heat um, and what we're trying to do is bring that heat into the room. We definitely could use that heat today. Um, I think we're going to get it. Um, so uh, to help generate that heat, um, I'm going to begin just very briefly discuss, uh, introducing our uh, commentators um, and moderator, um, and then work up to the star of the act. Um, we. Uh, are actually going to have our conversation is being moderated today, and I will essentially be turning the podium over to Sandy Banks, um, who is a popular columnist at the LA Times, um, no doubt uh, is the reason that brought many of you here, um, really a, an incredible fixture in the Los Angeles community. Um, so Sandy will be um, serving in the role of moderator once we get that more round table-ish discussion going, although I guess it's going to be a straight line of a table. Um, 
And then our commentators, in no particular order at all, um, from uh, Berkeley, from Bolt Law School at Berkeley, uh, Melissa Murray is here. Uh, and uh, she works in the areas of family law and criminal law. Um, and some of her more provocative titles and subjects uh, in articles include marriage as punishment, disestablishing marriage, just a little teaser, um, <laughs> Douglas Nijane, who was formerly a fellow at the Williams Institute at UCLA um, and joined the law faculty at Loyola in 2009. His fields are family law, law and sexuality, and legal ethics. Um, and here's his teaser. Um, in addition to, these are just samples of everyone has many publications to their name. Um, in addition to works like The Legal Mobilization Dilemma, Lawyering for Marriage Equality, uh, Doug is also the author of Marriage, Cruising, and Life in Between, Clarifying Organizational Positionalities in Pursuit of Polyvocal Gay-Based Advocacy. Um, and then it's a real pleasure to have on our panel two of my colleagues right here at the law school at USC. Uh, Camille Gear-Rich, her multiple areas of expertise include constitutional law, feminist legal theory, legal ethics, employment discrimination, and children in the law. Um, and some of her titles include Marginal Whiteness and Performing Racial and Ethnic Identity, Discrimination by Proxy. And finally, my colleague Kim Buchanan, uh, also a scholar and teacher in the area of constitutional law, as well as international and comparative human rights, prisoners' rights, reproductive rights, race, gender, and sexuality. Her works include The Sex Discount, and the heterosexual defense, sexual harassment among men. Um, so that gives you a sense of some of the perspectives in store. Um, of course, what's brought us all here is the immensely provocative, stimulating book by Richard Banks, is Marriage for White People. Um, and Richard Banks, also uh, is an eminent scholar in the fields of family law as well as employment discrimination law and race in the law. He is the Jackson Eli Reynolds Professor of Law at Stanford Law School. And it is just a very, very great pleasure to turn the table over. Um, and we're going to begin uh, with an introduction of the book followed by commentary from my colleague Kim, Kim Buchanan.